In this series, we explore and document the last remnants of original forest in Haiti. Elsewhere, forests have been cut for agriculture and cooking fuel. What we learn here may help save Haiti's biological heritage. Haiti is on the west side of Hispaniola, and Gran Caline is on the western end of the long Tiburon Peninsula in the Massif de la Haute. The central core of the Massif de la Haute is comprised of two mountain chains, the Chain de la Grande Colline and the Chain de Macaya. Both reach over 2,000 meters and contain remnant patches of original cloud forest. Grand Colline can be seen on the satellite map, with areas above 1,500 meters outlined. It is an uplifted region with a collection of peaks and a central valley, distinct from Makaya to the east. While the chain to Makaya is accessible by road and has been studied by teams of scientists, the chain de la Grande Colline is essentially unexplored. In March of 2011, we made a reconnaissance of this mountain chain in a helicopter. We first saw the deforested ravine de la Grande Colline. Then we flew over the eastern arm of Morne de Barriere, noticing patches of forest. The rounded peak of Morne de Barriere was more forested, as was its southern extension, Col de Barriere, a razor-sharp mountain pass. The most extensive forest that we saw was along the western slopes of Morne de la Grande Colline and Morne Grenouille, above 1500 meters. Some forest was present on the south face of Morne Grenouille. After passing over the southwest arm of Morn Lazar, we saw only patches of forest there and on the steep south face of Morn Lazar. Being far from cities and roads is a good thing for biodiversity because these areas are where the last 1% of Haiti's original forest can be found. This mountain chain was almost completely forested 55 years ago. However, when we visited in July of 2011, only 12% of the total area was covered in forest. It exists mostly on the western slopes furthest from any town. We observed many fires burning high on the slopes, like this one on Morn Lizard, showing that tree cutting continues at a fast pace. Our six minute reconnaissance of Grand Colline was unexpected because we were surveying Makaya and instructed the pilot to make a turn by mistake. Later we learned that almost no one had ever heard of Grand Colline, and we were unable to locate any biological collections from that mountain range. It was terra incognita. In July of 2011, we made an expedition to Grand Colline to learn more about this forgotten place. We went by helicopter because of the difficulty to reach the area by foot. The island of Isla Vache provided a base for the helicopter, requiring a 15-minute flight. Besides the pilot, our group included seven persons, a botanist from Florida, an ecologist from Haiti, a herpetologist from Penn State, a Ph.D. student from Penn State, a naturalist from the Dominican Republic, a videographer from the Dominican Republic, and a journalist from Philadelphia. Our mission was to learn as much as possible about the Grand Colleen, including the vegetation and the vertebrates. Our first destination was Morne de Barriere. Because of clouds, it was not possible to land on the peak, so we selected a spot on the north slope with patches of forest at 1,600 meters. The helicopter left us in a clearing just before dark and then went back to Isla Vache. First we set up camp and organized the equipment. We noticed that there was cloud forest above us on Morne de Barriere. It was actively being cleared for agriculture and charcoal, but some patches were still present. Soon we encountered a blue-eyed frog species, the La Haute glanded frog. We continued looking for an undisturbed patch of forest. As it got darker, the frogs began to call. A greater diversity of frogs could be heard calling as we approached a patch of forest. Here we found another endemic to the region, the Laote bush frog. This one is probably a new species related to the telegraph frog. And that's an adult, probably an adult male, I'm guessing. Sometimes you can see, yes, he's got a little vocal sac.
a male glanded frog calling. We were surprised to rediscover this species, the La Haute ornate frog, not seen in 40 years. This species, the Hispaniolan crowned frog, was previously known only from Plain Formon. This is the Hispaniolan sharp nosed frog. And this is the Hispaniolan big legged frog. We also found the short nosed green frog, including individuals with no green pigment. We have not yet identified some of the species, including these two. In the morning, we noticed houses and clearings below the campsite, and we were treated to a rare view of Morn Makaya from the west. The morning light gave us a clearer view of the mountains, showing that very little forest remains on the east slope of Morn de Barriere, Col de Barriere, and only patches of degraded forest are present on the north and east slopes of Morn de la Grande Colline. We called the pilot on the satellite phone to tell him we were ready and the weather was good. Then he appeared through the clouds, picked us up, and took us to another locality in the Grand Colline, on the south side of the mountain chain. Finding a place to land was difficult, as can be seen by these blue lines showing the helicopter path. Nonetheless, we got an excellent view of the Ravine de la Grande Colline and vegetation on the surrounding mountains. Almost the entire central core of the mountain range was deforested. There were signs of recent tree cutting and burning, indicating that deforestation was actively taking place. Here we are flying over Morne Petit Colline, just below Morne Grand Colline to the right. The east face of Morne Grenouille, showing mostly dirt and rocks, is straight ahead. Here you can see cloud forest at 1700 meters on the steep west slope of Col de Grenouille, between Morne Grand Colline and Morne Grenouille. Scattered pine trees are seen in the pass itself and occur on the south face and peak of Morne Grand Colline. This view is from Col de Grenouille, looking down the Ravine de la Colline, showing degraded forest in the ravine. The north slope of Morne Lazar is covered mostly with degraded forest and occasional patches of original forest. We landed on the southeast slope of Morne Grand Colline at 1737 meters. However, there was little force nearby, so we moved to a better location on Morn Lizard. We found an open field on Morn Lizar at 1800 meters and set up camp. As before, the pilot returned to our base on Ila Vache, leaving us overnight on the mountain. This La Haute glanded frog was found under a log and was guarding eggs and green colored hatchlings. We found patches of original cloud forest on Morn Lazar and explored a two hectare patch about 500 meters west of camp. In it were unusually large tree ferns more than 10 meters tall. Mozart's frog began to call late in the afternoon before dark. Bromeliads in this tree contained frogs that may be a new species. We also encountered a snake, the Hispaniolan lesser racer. After dark, we visited the forest patch west of camp. A rare lizard, the La Haute Twiganol, was found sleeping on a tree fern. So this is a, a twig giant anole of Hispaniola called Anolis darlingtoni. It was described in the 30s discovered in the 30s and described, uh, named after Darlington, a Harvard professor. Um, wasn't found again until the mid 80s. And then not, and people have looked since then and uh, here it is rediscovered in a very different place. Besides their rarity, these slow moving lizards have evolved a unique cryptic appearance and behavior that is aesthetically pleasing. And a rare frog, the Makaya dusky frog, was found calling from a hole in the ground. So that's him. The guy who was singing. And you can see the vocal sac is a different color, kind of a yellowish brown. 
Very pretty belly with a straight line. Kind of a dotted line there. Stocky frog, and you can tell by the the shape of the frog that it, it, it must live on the ground and probably in a burrow like we just found. Later we found it is genetically distinct from the Makaya populations. The next morning, this green and all was observed on the flower stalk of an agave plant. We found Mozart's frog, including this striped individual. We also encountered various insects. This is a view of the western slope of Morn Makaya from Morn Lazar. So what we're doing here is we're making these animals uh, comfortable so they don't uh, uh, suffer from the heat or from the sunlight and give them ferns. The ferns help keep the bags expanded so they don't collapse on the frogs. Bringing some specimens to the lab is critical for several reasons. DNA sequences are needed for correct identifications. Morphological analyses are needed to describe new species and cryobank cells will keep species alive in case they go extinct in the wild. As we departed Grand Colleen, we saw below us endless hills that once had forests but now are mostly dirt and rocks. Millions of plants and animals have perished, including entire species. We realized the great value of the last remaining forests in this mountain range and the animals they support, but without protection it will all disappear soon.